five laps to go. It's Turnbull, Glens, Meyer, Diemel, Massingill, your top five. Boy, I tell you what, it's anybody's race with those top four down there. A.J. Demo definitely not done in that 58 car. Wow, Glenn's got right up on the door handle of Aaron Turnbull down to the bottom side. Turnbull with the momentum up top. He'll hold on to the lead. Three laps remaining, only three to go. As they come down the front straightaway, Turnbull still your leader. Two laps remaining. Only two to go. Here comes A.J. Diemel in second place again. Can he hold on to it? Diemel now making a move. We are three wide down the front straightaway. White flag. This is going to be something, race fans. Do not take your eyes off the 21 and the 58. And here comes the seven and blends. Out of turn number four, your winner. Back to back, it's Aaron Turnbull. All right, Ryan Aho here from the One to Go show with Bert Lehman, uh, one of our co-hosts. Pooh cannot be able to make it, but we are actually visiting with somebody that shocked the world. The guy barely races at all, and he just comes and shows them who's boss, Aaron Turnbull. How you doing, man? Really good. I, I first question I gotta ask you, and everybody's asking me this: How the heck did you get across the border, or get your car across the border? How did how did you make all that happen? Um, well, uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, you can you can get across if you have commercial reasons, and um, also, you know, if you do personal stuff like I did while you're down there, then you just gotta quarantine when you get back and and kind of self-isolate they call it so we're doing that now and um i'll just we live uh my shop where i work is kind of right next door to my house so um yeah i can still basically go to work i just can't leave the farm so i'll be here for two weeks and whatever i'll i'll, I'll live i'll be fine <laughs> i suppose you will Ninety two hundred dollars richer don't really hurt your feelings either. So so you guys have a family farm, is that what you guys do up there? Is it Estevan, Saskatchewan, correct? Yeah, I shouldn't call it a farm. We call it should be called an acreage, I guess, but we, we live just outside of town and um yeah, we kinda my dad's kinda right next door and my brother's just down the road too, so so you're no, I guess Bert. Uh, I'll let you kind of fire off. I know you had a couple of questions here for Aaron. Why don't, why don't you go ahead and start off, and then I'll roll into some stuff too. Well, you won the the race last year, uh, and then the whole COVID thing came in March. Uh, when did you decide that you were going to try to go defend uh, winning the race? Well, I kind of had in my mind that I didn't want to miss it and I was going to, you know, exhaust every avenue to try and get there. So, um, went through a lot of different scenarios, how to get the car there and how to get me there and, um, had a, had a truck lined up basically like Brad saying, he's, he's got trucks that come right through my town here. He says twice a week and they, they actually picked up the trophy, but, uh, to take it back down there in case I couldn't make it. But um, we were going to put my car in there, but it turned into a lot more logistics than, than it was worth. So uh, it would have been very costly with, you know, importing and brokers and stuff like that. So that kind of went out the window. And and uh, anyway, I, I knew a couple other guys that had done it earlier in the year, just doing it different ways. And that's basically what I did. And a um, little bit different, but um, yeah, it worked out and it was kind of still, I still wasn't a hundred percent sure if it was going to work until I actually got on the U S side of the border. So I'm um, <laughs> glad to be back home now and have all that stress behind me. <laughs> well, I, I think that's crazy. I mean, cause it, you know, where we're from, where I, maybe not Bert, but where I'm from Northern Minnesota, you know, my home tracks were Hibbing, Grand Rapids, Superior. They always relied on, like, the Thunder Bay guys, people from, like, Emo, Ontario. They would always come down, and that would be 
you know, a fairly good fortune, even Grand Forks. I mean, they always had a ton of Winnipeg guys coming down. And, you know, is it one of those deals where that was a not, I don't want to say it was easy to do, but it was possible to do like on a one-time deal. Would it be like a big headache if a guy wanted to try to do that every week? Well, um, I think the biggest thing is the two week quarantine. Like, you know, for me being right next door to my shop, it's not that difficult. I can get somebody else to like, I have a sign business so I can, you know, get somebody else to put up the signs. I just got to make them. So, um, for most guys, they probably can't take that two weeks off work, you know, let alone multiple times a year. So I definitely wasn't planning on doing it more than once. So for this race, you know, even if I hadn't won it, um, it, it still would have been worth it because I just really enjoy the race and all the effort, the track and the sites family all put into it. So. Well, and uh, you won last year's race and, I mean, you've only raced a handful of times this year. Uh, how do you go from racing a handful of times to uh, winning the race, beating some of the top drivers in, in that area? Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of was going into it like I felt like I had an advantage because I hadn't been wearing myself out and my car out all year. And uh, my stuff was still pretty fresh. So um, I, I, I was actually more confident going into it this year than I was last year. I kind of was telling my, my crew chief guy that helps me on the car all the time. Uh, I was kind of telling him that before I left, like I actually feel uh, a little, you know, better about this year than I did last year. And um, anyway, it, uh, it all worked out. <laughs> You know, I, I raced a bunch of shows, and I you know, I always kind of thought, like, man, it, it took me a couple nights to kind of get in a rhythm, you know, and then you kind of get some momentum. You kind of feel like you're one with the car, and things start to go from there. And literally, you had three nights in a late model before you come down, so there was no rhythm. You know, and I'm kind of envious because I'm kind of the guy that needed a lot of, a lot of nights to kind of make things happen. And you're, you just hop in, and you're like, well, second, 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 first. Like, you didn't finish worse than second all year long. It's incredible. So, you know, what what do you got to do to race more? I mean, is there – where do you race at? Is there, like, a weekly track out there? I mean, you got to travel over to Winnipeg. I mean, there's not much – there's not much racing up there, like, living yeah. where we live. Yeah. I mean, um, the three races I did in Canada and the Thursday night show in Grand Forks, I feel like if I wouldn't have raced those – I would have had a really hard time, you know, putting myself in position to win the 92 lapper this year. Just, I had little odds and ends to sort out with the car. And um, actually the week, uh, last week before I went down um, on the previous weekend, we had the motor strip right down, intake heads right off of it. Because when I went over to Winnipeg to race, um, a week or two before we, we noticed that um, the radiator was losing water a lot and it was pushing it out of the overflow. And so we were kind of, you know, and then I started pulling plugs and yeah, those don't look good at all. So I think we got a head gasket out here. So we got a head gasket and um, me and my dad took the heads off and put new gaskets on. And I guess we did it right because it, it held together. So um yeah, if it wasn't for those few races. And even even uh, back in July, we had a race in Estevan here. And, um, you know, it was all just Canadian cars. And we had a pretty decent field. You know, Shane Edgington and Mike Balkan were here and the Smith boys. And it was, it was pretty awesome. But, um, yeah, you know, I found some issues there with setup. And just the car wasn't working the way I liked it. And so that probably helped me too. just, you know, I can, I can tell by looking at photos, the different attitude the car had in 2019 and in, in Grand Forks versus this year. And I think it helped me. And I think I could even fine tune that a little better for next year. I don't think anybody wants to see that. They're like, man, this kid barely races and he's already <laughs> fast enough. So yeah. I, I don't know. Kind of talking in the shop today, like we should just, park the car and just uh, save that for the sites every year because it's uh it's pretty good the way it is well, that's a pretty big one to win so Bert what else you got man 
Well, I watched the, the end of the race, and uh, while you were leading, uh, there was a good battle between uh, Jesse Glanz and AJ Demo. And did you have any idea how close they were to you, and that AJ was char char charging at the very end? No, not till I seen AJ's nose there. I guess it was coming to the white. I don't think I really seen much else before that. I might have caught. Uh, I think Jesse was inside of me one time, and. You know, sometimes you don't know if that's just the lap car you just went by, but um, I I had no idea. I, I kind of thought I had a bit of a lead, and I was actually probably only going about 80%. And, um, you know, I you never know if you're going to get a caution with a green-white checkered or something like that, and you want to keep your tires under you. You don't want to burn it right off. So um, I, was, I was still kind of leaving a little bit in the tank, and, you know, when AJ, I seen him there, um coming to the white and um uh, it just i didn't really have a lot of everything happened so fast in grand forks like you know i think we were probably a little slower at the end of the race but you know when you're doing 12 second lap times they just go by so quick and so you know i seen him and then all of a sudden i gotta make a split second decision what am i gonna do here to hold him off and so I went a little lower in one and two, and I probably could have went lower than I did. But um, it's just the way the, uh, you know, and it's easy to say now, but, you know, when you're leading, you're kind of a sitting duck sometimes, and you don't know if you should move around. And those guys are watching me and, you know, seeing what I'm doing wrong. So, um, you know, I can see now how the top had gone away and the middle, you know, being in that, little bit of a dish to the track because at the very top it does kind of crown off a little bit I can see now how he was making time through the middle there and I had ran that line earlier in the race and it felt extremely good and, and uh yeah I just you know 30 to go there there was a good cushion and I could get a really good run off that but it was pretty well gone at the end so yeah that hot rod was good now tell us how did you get into racing well, uh, my dad always raced. Um, he, uh, he was a pretty big Wissota mod guy back in the day and won the Wissota 100 and Western 100 and um, a, lot of, a lot of big races like in Minot, North Dakota and stuff like that. So, you know, grew up watching him and um, I started when I was 14 in hobby stock and moved into an IMCA mod when I was 16 and um, pretty much ran that straight until I, I still had a IMCA modified until about three or four years ago. And, and I had kind of previous, you know, the four years before that I had do, been doing a little bit of both late models and modified. So I kind of got to a point where, you know, IMCA has gone to this great deal and I wasn't a huge fan of it. So I, I was just like, well, I've, I really enjoy the late model a lot more. So I think going back and forth was hurting me and, you know, driving wise and setup wise, not that I, I'm a big setup guy, but you know, I just, it takes a little different adjustments and it takes a little different driving style. And I just thought, you know, I should just focus on one and just try and do it well. And, you know, um, it seems to be paying off, I guess, but you know, it, it helps to have a really good car like the, the MB that we're running and um, motors running really strong. So it's just a whole package. So, well, you ran a mod to start the season this year. Whose car did you drive there? What that was, was that? my dad's car. Um, that was a brand new car he just got, and uh, he kind of wanted me to try it out and see what I thought. And it was pretty good. So, yeah, I ran that a couple times, and still, even the last couple of years, I've hopped in other guys' mods the odd time, too, but um, I, I just don't own one myself anymore, so just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of work having two cars, and now I kind of am back to having two cars because my son, who's seven, and uh, he's got a slingshot now, so I don't know if anybody's familiar with those, but we got those here in Estevan, and He's been uh, asking about getting one for several years now, so we got him started, and that thing's a fair bit of work too, so got to keep up with that, and that was, you know, keeping us busy all summer too, so we got, I think, nine or ten races in in Esteban this year by the time we 
finally got going in the end of June or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, busy with that too. Man, I tell you, I, I told Bert before we got on the show that you remind me so much of Buzzy Adams. Okay. Now, you have, you ever race against Buzzy at all, or you have you taught you know Buzzy at all, or? Um, I know of him. I I've never met him, and uh, I don't know if I ever did race against him. Yeah, you're a second generation guy. You got a kid. He's your he's your kid's in a slingshot. His is in a go kart. You said you have a sign shop. You do like graphics and all that. Yeah, I right now um, I used to do a lot of graphics and signs on buildings and that sort of thing. But um, right from the start, when I started doing it, we also did like portable billboards and stuff. So that part grew to where that could be the the full-time gig so i kind of separated the company into two and sold off the sign shop and now i basically just focus on the billboard stuff and i enjoy that and so you got that going on and then you're like extremely laid back right you're not like flamboyant but you get in a race car you're a terror just like buzzy so i mean it's like like you guys got to be like distant cousins or something like if you met him i'd be like <laughs> You guys are just like two peas in a pod for sure. And both you two can get around the racetrack. So it's, it was a pleasure watching you. Bert, I know you got something there too. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, uh, what are your plans for the rest of the year? Are you going to get the race anymore this year? Or, um, you know, yeah, you know? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think we're <laughs> done for the year here. Um, I think Winnipeg has one or two more, but it's, one of those is going to be during my quarantine. So, um, I, I'm legally not allowed to leave the property I'm on for two weeks here. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's tough to get over. That's still five hours away from me. So to go for a one day show, it's kind of tough. And, um, they, if, if they were having a double header, I might go for you know two days or something, but yeah, that's pretty much it north of the border here. And, um, yeah, I, I, that, that'll probably be it for this year. I think we'll just kind of start uh, tearing a few things apart and, and fine-tuning things for next year. And I don't know. We probably won't. I don't know if we'll go racing anywhere else this winter, but um, I guess hopefully the border's open by next year and we can get back to normal. Where do you typically run when you run late models? I mean, a little bit in Estevan, a little bit in Winnipeg. Is there anything further west or where, I mean, where do you typically run in a normal year throughout the season, you know, midsummer? Yeah, mostly in North Dakota, I guess. Um, Estevan and Winnipeg is kind of pretty much the only Canadian tracks I usually get to. Like the only other one that would run late models would be Edmonton and it's like 10 hours north of me. So, um, yeah, I usually try to get to as many NLRA shows as I can, which is sometimes tough because they're at least four or five hours away. But um, sometimes you can get a weekend swing of three races. So anyway, there's usually, you know, Williston, Minot, um, Jamestown, Devil's Lake. And then I like to go to the outlaw show and at least you know some NLRA shows in Grand Forks and obviously the sites and um yeah I'd like to get to more like Fargo or Ada or stuff like that but you know sometimes it's just we're just busy with work and stuff and so normally in a normal year I get about 12 shows in and that's just fine with me and it's uh doesn't seem like such a full-time job it's kind of laid back which is the way I am and, and I I just enjoy it. Just kind of focus on bigger shows and, you know, when I can be properly prepared to go. So that's, that's kind of the way I operate. 12 shows in a year. And I'm like, I'm thinking back. I'm like, I think I ran 17 nights in a row one time. So I'm like, <laughs> man, that, that's just crazy. And I needed all of them to stay on top of my game. And you run 12 shows on load. I think them boys up there in NLRA country are really happy that you don't follow that series. <laughs> Because you might have a little something to say to Dustin Strand about winning that deal. Have you ever put any thoughts into, like, if things started out well at the beginning of 2021, of, of just following the whole series to see if you can win the points in that deal? Yeah. Or? I mean, actually, I don't know, like in January or February, when it, you know, before all this stuff got out of hand, 
um, that was my plan was to make sure I get to like at least the first six NLRA shows. And if I'm doing decent, then I'm going to follow the whole thing. Um, that, that was my plan this year. And obviously that got shut right down, but um, I, I definitely like to tr try and take a couple stabs at that full schedule. And it's a little tougher where we're situated, but um, I, I love racing with the NLRA and all those boys that race it. And they're all super clean racers and, and really stiff competition. I, I love racing against stiff competition. You know, I don't care if Jimmy Marshall's up to the sights and that's, that's perfect. I, I love that. So it's, uh, it's always fun. So basically what you're saying is Jimmy Mars, you're, you're kind of a punk. Come on over. You got nothing <laughs> for me. Like, come on over. I ain't scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, I, I just, I just enjoy racing against those guys. They all race clean and, and, uh, you know, you can, you can just learn a lot from racing with guys like that. So. Absolutely. He's one of the best for sure. When you race against the better the guys you race against, the better that you are for it for sure. Bert, I know it looked like you had something else there too. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, you won ninety two hundred dollars uh in, in the race, but uh even more important than that, that win has catapulted you onto the one to go show top ten driver list. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I was I was actually browsing your uh your site there. <laughs> Uh, just before this and that's that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah, yeah we slid you right up in the power rankings like man if this guy raced a bunch he'd be like right up here but you know so yeah you're definitely up there you know i remember when i was a kid i mean i was always hibbing Grand rapid superior and from canada i mean tom nesbitt joel kreiderman they come down from thunder bay and they won a ton of races you know in, in the winnipeg area and of course you know estevan that's way further west from me so I never really got to see uh, Mike Balkin would probably be the big one that I got to see because he came down once in a while. But I mean, you, you look at you, you look at Eddington, is it Edgington or Eddington? Is it Edgington? Is that what it is? Edgington, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys come down you make your presence known. I mean, so, I mean, there's some, I'm like Canada, they, they play hockey, right? That's what they do. They play <laughs> hockey, but they win races too, you know? So you ever, you ever kind of wish like, man, I wish, you ever kind of have them thoughts that it would be nice to live in an area where you could literally be an hour away from four or five different tracks like some people have? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I was just saying that to Jesse Glenn's and we were parked next to each other this weekend. I was just saying that to him, man, like you guys got so many good shows coming up. I wish I was, you know, situated right over there too and, and could hit up all those too. But um, yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. I mean, even if I was, situated in Grand Forks or something like that or even even Winnipeg you know it's there's uh all that stuff on on like the I-29 you know Grand Forks Fargo and even when you start kind of crisscrossing around there's a lot of good stuff around there I'd, I'd love to go to more of it it's just, you know I always have intentions to go to more and sometimes work gets in the way or whatever so so you got to pay your bills too all right fair enough <laughs> Bert, you got anything uh, before we close? No, I, I don't have anything else. <laughs> well, how about sponsors? I mean, we'll, we'll end with this because obviously to race at a high level, there's people that have helped you, whether it's hands-on stuff or people that mentored you along the way or sponsors that you may have. You know, is there anybody that, you know, after the great weekend you have, again, congratulations on your second straight site, is there anybody that you want to thank? Um, yeah, my, my – Kind of two or three main sponsors is Mac Auction and Sun Tubular Testing and uh, Quick Rex Rescue Roof and uh, uh, the Mars Boys help me out a lot. Um, I mean, I they'll probably tell you it's pretty much right on the baseline setup. I I don't really deviate from that. It works good as is, and, um, so I don't need to pick their brain too much. But um, they they're a huge help when I do need it. And, um, like I was saying before, you know, my dad helps a lot and, um, you know, he helped me get with the motor stuff and he was, he was at the sites last year and we had some issues with water pump and stuff and he'd go right in there and help us fix that and, you know, always stuff like that, that, uh, it's always nice and he knows what he's doing and stuff. So, um, Chris Spence is kind of my main pit guy. 
Um, we work at the same shop. He's actually got a modified. And sometimes I help him with that. And he helps me with my late model. We've become pretty good buddies. And, um, yeah, and, and my family for sure. You know, my wife Tanya and my kids. And um, that was the hardest part about going this year is I couldn't take anybody with me. So um, it'll uh, it'll be nice to be back there next year with all those guys. Um, I'm guessing they were watching on FYE.TV, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they had a little bit of a watch party and had, uh, you know, them and my dad and some, some close friends and stuff that were over here. And I wish they would have uh, set up a camera and, and, you know, been able to see all their reactions when the race was going on and you'd come across the checkers and that sort of thing because that would have been pretty cool to watch their reactions. But, you know, you never know. It's uh, who'd have thought I was going to win it two years in a row. So um, I was kind of just hoping for, you know, a top three, top five would have been pretty awesome. But um, if everything kind of just played out pretty similar to last year, just, you know, bided my time and saved the stuff for the end and, and uh, found a good line there. And, and it just uh, it all kind of worked out pretty similar. Awesome. Why? Well, thanks for the time. Uh, you know, it was a pleasure meeting you. I never actually met you in person. Been watching you the last couple of years here. Um, it's one thing to win the sites, but to win it two in a row is just incredible. I mean, 4950 late model is there this year. I mean, stout field of cars to get that done is just, you know, that's something that uh, you'll, you'll put in your resume there for a long time. So congratulations yeah. on that. And hopefully this all this COVID crap finishes up soon because I want to get that 21 card out to some of the shows that we're doing next year. We'll be excited for that and uh, have a good off season here. And hopefully we see you this winter sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Ryan A. Hill, Bert Lehman from the One to Go Show, visiting with the two-time reigning Sites Memorial winner, Aaron Turnbull from um, Esteban, Saskatchewan, Canada. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you.